The image and reputation of the Irish food industry abroad is built on exactly the sort of lush green landscape that we see here behind us today in County Tipperary. When consumers abroad think about Irish food, this is what they imagine. Currently our food and drink exports stand at around 9 billion euro and the future looks bright. Agriculture was once the backbone of the Irish economy and could be again. Food Harvest 2020 is our ambitious plan to dramatically increase our food production in the next eight years and help set the economy back on its feet. However, there's one huge problem. Currently, one third of all our greenhouse gas emissions comes from agriculture. In this programme, we'll be asking how on earth we can create the biggest expansion in food production we've ever seen and cut emissions at the same time. As environmental challenges go, this one is as big as it gets. European consumers are now savvy about where their food comes from and how it's produced. They've looked for quality and traceability for quite a while and now want sustainability on their shopping list too. By 2050, we'll have 9 billion mouths to feed. Using current production methods, there's no way to meet that demand without pumping lethal amounts of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. I flew to Paris to visit Cial, the largest food trade show in the world. Inside this giant supermarket, 150,000 buyers from 200 countries are deciding what will be on the world's plates for breakfast, dinner and tea. The scale of the exhibition was enormous, with thousands of stands selling every type of food you could imagine. Our appetite for new culinary experiences is apparently limitless. As this year's theme is innovation, I was anxious to track down a major buyer and find out how sustainability fits on their shopping list. This show is really important for us, actually. I'm coming every two years because we got a lot of contact here. What are the, the, the ingredients that makes that important? Is um, climate change important in terms of...? It's important to know the programme for the dairy industry from the beginning, from the farmer to the end of the chain, actually. And that's how you can measure the impact of the real sustainability. It's not only sustainability on the paper, but it's a real work behind that. Markets everywhere are very competitive. You have to have a point of difference. One of the challenges perhaps that we have is proving our credentials. And I think Ireland Inc. needs to focus on that in terms of it's, it's not good enough to claim it, you have to prove it. Next, I met Una Fitzgibbon from Board Bia, who is launching Origin Green, Ireland's plan to steal a march on the competition. This will position us as the first country in the world to create a national, sustainable and traceable food programme. But to put it in perspective, it's about 15 times the size of the RDS in general. Wow, I, I can see it, I can feel it. Yeah. You know, you've come it's in here, buzzing. it's massive. Yeah, yeah. How are we perceived in that situation, in terms of Irish food now today? Yeah. I mean, for example, do people see quality food from Ireland? Is that a, is that a factor? Um, Absolutely. We're perceived as a natural supplier and have been for years. That has a lot to do with the authenticity of the natural processes that we have, the grass-fed and pasture-fed beef and dairy, our seafood and so on. But we're recognised very much as a green country. Green is our colour. And the whole idea of Origin Green, which is a new branding platform for the Irish food and drink industry, is that it's squaring the circle between that green image of colour, if you like, or landscape, and the environmental impacts of food production. So it's moving towards proving the sustainability credentials that Irish Food and Drink has, um, and using that as a competitive platform for marketing Irish Food and Drink in international markets. Looking around the stands at CL, it became obvious that our competitors had started targeting quality, traceability and innovation, but no one had really grasped the nettle of sustainability, as we were doing. In the middle of what was essentially the world's biggest supermarket, Ireland was laying claim to a unique selling point, a verifiable, sustainable food chain from farm to fork. What we're announcing here, and it's very important, is the beginning of a journey. So what we're not saying to the trade is, we're there, we're sustainable. What we're saying is, sustainability is a destination. But over the next two years, we'll be building the evidence base of actual improvement in sustainability performance 
with the industry and communicating that to customers throughout the world. We couldn't possibly be at this show claiming Origin Green, seeding it as a message that this is our platform around environmental impact unless everybody was signed up. And we need to be very, very careful how we communicate environmental claims. I left the buyers chewing over their options in Paris to return to Ireland for the next part of my journey. Reducing emissions on such a large scale is an immense challenge. So I headed for Johnstown Castle to meet some of the country's best scientific minds at Chagask. Here they're taking centuries of farming practice and adding cutting edge technology to test ways of reducing greenhouse gases from the production process. Why do we need to get this information measured to such an accurate level? Well, for two reasons, Duncan. First, for verification, again, scientific verification that our mitigation strategies, be they for air or for water, are working. And also to get proof for the farmer that we can reduce the losses of nitrogen to groundwater and to air. Then that's more nitrogen that's available for uptake in the plants. That means you get more grass being grown. That means you get more grass into the animal. It means you get more milk, you get more beef, or in the context of tillage, you get more barley, you get more wheat. And is this the type of proof and verification now that the Europeans, the big distributors of food are looking for? Yeah, they're basically looking for a, a sustainability index on all food produce. And that doesn't just cover greenhouse gases, that covers water quality, it covers biodiversity, it covers animal welfare issues as well which is again why Ireland is very good on that because we keep our animals grazing on grass for as long as possible instead of having them housed indoors. Chagas have developed the Carbon Navigator. This is essentially a tool to show the farmer how the emission reducing strategies are working on the farm and to keep his targets on track. We've included within that Carbon Navigator the main reduction strategies that we've researched, things like uh, extending the grazing season length, improving the economic breeding index or productivity of the animals, reduction of slaughter times for, for beef animals, um, changing the type of fertiliser you put out, also the timing of fertiliser and the timing of, of slurry when you put it out. Gary's team have their farm hardwired for experimentation to monitor and test their theories. Without verification, there'd be no way to prove to buyers back in Paris that what we're selling has been produced sustainably. So we've amalgamated it in conjunction with Bordbia into this uh, decision support system, which then farmers can use, and it will show them um, how far along they are in, in terms of improving their carbon footprint on the farm, and also then improving in terms of resource efficiency on the farm. Right, so if you take the big picture here now of Food Harvest 2020 and the massive increases, 20% more beef and 50% more dairy produce, that's a massive expansion. How are we going to reconcile that with keeping all of the issues of sustainability down, bringing down our carbon emissions, our, our, our impacts on water, our biodiversity protection? How are we going to deal with that? It's, Really, it's, it's, about, it's about incorporating individual measures that we're researching down here or researching in other parts of the country and integrating those into sustainable production systems that A, reduce your methane emissions per unit product, B, reduce your nitrogen, C, enhance biodiversity, and D, enhance water quality. And really, that's where we've got to move to. Whole full-scale production systems that can expand can intensify what will be sustainable into the long term. The dairy industry also wants to extend its global reach. We export 80% of all our dairy production and need to be able to deliver on our promise of sustainability to seal the deal if we want to grow that market. Ireland's abundant grassland gives our dairy farmers a big advantage over our competition. We can use it to further reduce our greenhouse gas per kilo of milk, but we have our work cut out. In Kilkenny, I joined dairy farmer Eamon Phelan at milking time to see how hard it would be to apply new science to traditional farming. Hi Eamon. Hello Duncan. Pleased nice to, to meet you. you. Lovely place You're here. Welcome. Beautiful house. Lovely old farm buildings here too. Yeah, we've preserved some of the older ones all right I suppose, but they need updating. But The whole setting here is great. 
So yeah. sustainability is becoming a core issue now with consumers all across Europe. How are you as a farmer able to cope with that challenge? I suppose what you do principally is um, you farm more with nature, you're more aware of the facilities you have and the natural grass. You extend the grazing season, you prolong it so that you're producing more milk from grass. You might be supplementing it often during the year, but grass is in their diet as long as possible while you're milking. You're making more use of slurry. Before, slurry was regarded more as a waste product. Now it is regarded as a natural fertiliser. You're very conscious of the environment, like, and every farmer now has to have their sufficient slurry capacity. And I suppose once you have that right, then you have savings by having grass in the diet as long as possible because it is the cheapest form of feed. Concentrates are getting dearer all the time, like, and the less you need of them, the better. Same with silage, with the costs of fuel and machinery. So the more grass you have, the longer you're grazing, the cheaper it is. Are these the cows now, Eamon, that we're waiting for milking? Yes, we're just about to start now. Okay. So maybe we'll let them on. They know the time's come. They're about 50, 50, so twice a day. I normally give them a bit of music. <laughs> what sort of music? <laughs> but the morning programme is over now at okay. this stage, so <laughs> I think they'll be okay. They actually know which spot they go into. Oh, Look right. at that. Come on. Come on. This is amazing. All of these cows know exactly where they need to go. They know what's going on. They're desperate to get the milking done. They seem to be quite happy. And I think with the music now, let's see, does that actually make them perform even better? First, okay. turn it up, and then press the button. I think this lady thinks I'm not very professional at what I'm doing here. <laughs> it's just practice. She recognises an amateur, I think. I used to milk by hand when I was a child, two Kerry cows. So this is quite sophisticated for me. So, women, with all of this increase in management and in cost, probably, how are you as a farmer going to deal with these issues? We hope to get a um, better price, premium price for our products. And once you reach the quality and the standards required, that we'll get the return from it. And that we'll always be one step ahead of the costs. We have a natural advantage here in Ireland, like we're known as the Green Isle, I suppose. And we shouldn't have to put in the capital expenditure that farmers in other countries throughout Europe and the world would have to, to attain the standards. Lawrence at Chagusk met me at the farm to explain the changes dairy farmers would have to embrace if we were to stage a new food revolution. And have we got natural advantages here in Ireland? Absolutely. Irish emissions per unit product are comparing very favourably. Recently, uh, in the last year, year and a half, there was a study published by the EU uh, Joint Research Committee. And basically they showed from a milk point of view, Ireland was the lowest per unit product within the EU. Lawrence, most of our viewers now watching our programme have major concerns about sustainability in Ireland in terms of biodiversity loss, in terms of water quality, in terms of greenhouse gas emissions. Where do we fit regarding Europe in this context? I suppose, you know, uh, we're on a farm here that's pasture-based. Uh, the cows go out to graze the grass. If we compare that to continental Europe, where most of the animals are housed for large, much larger proportions of the year, the feed is brought into them, we compare very, very positively on all of those aspects that you've mentioned. And it's a case, you know, we've, we've gone down the road in terms of greenhouse gas, of quantifying that at farm level. Now, over the next couple of years, uh, we have to build on that and, 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 you know, energy, water, biodiversity. We also have to uh, have verifiable numbers that we can stand over. But, you know, it's a very positive story. Next, I met the food processors to see how sustainability works once the milk has left the farm. Striving for a low carbon footprint is essential for companies like Glanbia. With over 4,300 employees worldwide and Irish products sold on every continent, Glanbia's future business depends on feeding the consumer's appetite for sustainable growth. I met the Director of Strategy, Sean Malloy. 
This is becoming an increasingly important topic from us uh, from a number of reasons. First of all, within the market, there's a demand for farmers to work in a particular fashion, but also on the farms themselves. We would contend that in an Irish context, efficient, very well-run commercial farms are those in turn that have the lowest emission levels of, of CO2. So focusing on working with our farmers to ensure that those levels can be reduced over time, in actual fact, are helping those farms themselves improve the efficiency of production on their farms. Glanbia have signed up to the Origin Green Sustainability Charter and have invested heavily in management systems to cut emissions from their own production process. They've increased energy efficiency and actually improved the quality of the water drawn from the River Nore when it's returned after use. I was curious to find out how these initiatives were filtering back down the food chain. Are encouraging our farmers to get involved with this? We're very much encouraging our farmers to get involved in this and in fact uh, over the last year we've had trials on about 250 farms on our sustainability programs. And feedback is exceptionally good. I think our farmers appreciate that what we're doing is to try and work with them to ensure that the good work that they do on their farms, the natural environment in which they work in, is taken advantage of in terms of a leverage in the market and we are working very closely with our farmers and increasingly so to ensure that they are working within a framework which the market demands. I think the challenge for us is to ensure that the growth that occurs is sustainable growth, that it's growth that's conscious of the environment in which it's produced, that's able to manage and use the best technology available to ensure that the, this is done in a sustainable fashion. And that's what the market requires as well. If we look at some of the very valuable customers we have here in Glanbia, be they in the infant formula business, in the cream liqueur business, clinical nutrition, all of those companies are wanting increased product produced and sold to them, but they want it carried out in a sustainable environment. In North County Dublin, the Hoy family have been growing fresh produce for almost a hundred years. In the old days, sustainability wasn't so much a marketing promise as it was a way of life. Today, however, consumers have enough on their plates and want the ethical worries removed from the food before consumption. In fact, Country Crest have taken their challenge so seriously, they've even installed their own wind turbine, producing half their energy needs. What I really like about this farm is where a family's tradition of growing vegetables has passed on from generation to generation over the last hundred years. We go from field to fork. Essentially, we plan our crops. Uh, now, for next year, we're planning our crops, we're selecting our fields, and that requires a lot of labor and a lot of hard thinking and planning so that the customer will get what they expect on their plate for our dinner in the evening, good quality produce. How did this family here get involved in a sustainable approach to farming like this? Well, I suppose in a way tradition is very important here in Country Crest and with Michael and Gabriel. I mean, the Hoy family have been farming here on this site for over 100 years. And they've always grown up with traditional methods of farming. And one of the big ethos from us is, is actually giving something back. So when we get a good living from the land, so we like to give something back. We at Country Crest won the Board B Sustainability Award. So it's a natural progression for us to come into as one of the founder members of Origin Green. And Origin Green gives us a base where we can learn from other companies, like-minded companies in Ireland, and they can learn from us. We have a good, clean, green story to give out there, so it's a natural progression, and it will benefit us as a company, but also benefit the image of Ireland. We're always saying we're a green country, so why not promote that? Let people know and be proud. So where are you going from here? What's your next kind of targets to meet here? Well, well, we've basically identified four targets over the next four years, five years. Energy management and energy use would be number one. Waste management would be number two. Water, water usage, water recycling is number three. And biodiversity is number four. We're in the process now of planning for uh, an anaerobic digester system. That will give us our 100% requirement of electricity, of heat, and of hot water as well. So by 2015, our plan and our hope is we'll be energy self-sufficient on Country Crest. Creating sustainable food and drink production means providing for our current needs in a way that doesn't compromise the needs of future generations. Some of the groundwork has been done. Board Bia's Quality Assurance Scheme managed to sign up 40,000 Irish farmers. Now, Origin Green hopes to build on that success by adding its own sustainability charter. It's a natural progression from where we are, but what will be really challenging for farmers is increasing production at the same time. Again, this is where science can step in. 
It's a beautiful day down here in County Tipperary and I'm invited down by Michael Murphy, who's a beef farmer who's won prizes in sustainability. Down in Michael's farm, the Origin Green audit was taking place. Using a specially created app, Barry Hickey, the auditor, was able to create a snapshot of the farm's environmental performance and targets, keeping track of everything from feed to pharmaceuticals. Michael, I love your farm down here. Wonderful landscape. How many acres have you got? Uh, roughly uh, 228 acres altogether. And how many cattle have you got? Uh, at any given time, there's over 300 cattle. Right, now I believe you're a prize winner in terms of sustainability, but you're also an All-Ireland champion hurler. Yeah, I used to hurl at Tipperary in my younger days, winning minor under 21 All-Irelands. So you like winning prizes? I do, yeah, I like being competitive. Right, so this whole issue of sustainability now, how have you grasped onto that? Well, sustainability has been with me a long time now. I've been doing what I've been doing for quite a few years. I used to be in dairying, and I lost the herd with brucellosis back in 1998, so I stuck with Frisian cattle, and I try and produce beef as best I can. And the consumer is king at the minute. They, they're dictating what they want. Right. And you have to produce what they want. Right, so regarding sustainability, you know, is it, does it impose a lot on you in terms of extra work or...? No, it doesn't, because uh, you have to keep track of records and daily live weight gain is the key. I'm really amazed. Of all the sophisticated equipment and modern tools that Michael has here on his farm, the one that he finds most useful is the weighing scales. Not alone does this let him know how his cattle are performing, but it also lets him know how he's performing. This is the way things have gone. Food has got so expensive to produce. You've got to be very efficient in what you do, and animals are very expensive to produce and buy, and every animal that comes into my farm uh, has to be put in, in excess of a kilo a day. The weighing is very important because if the animal isn't performing, it's obviously something that I'm not doing correctly. So as well as the animal being monitored, I'm monitoring my own performance as well. I'm also here to meet Podrick Brennan from Board Bia, who is an expert in this whole area of how farms can become sustainable. And why are farmers buying into this? Farmers are buying into this for two reasons. Number one, they know we have to have the best possible market that we can have for our products. And number two, they see an economic benefit as well, because essentially, if you're farming sustainably, there's economic benefits in that you're reducing the cost of production or maybe increasing your profitability. So there's an economic and an environmental benefit that they see. And you won't come across any farmer in this country who won't want to leave the land in a better position when they're finished with it than it was when they started. So what about uh, dehorning of baby calves? What age would they be dehorned at? They're dehorned at about two weeks. Okay. We're trying to capture information from Michael about you know, how much beef is he producing, how long are the animals outdoors, uh, what are they being fed, how does he manage his manure, things like that. We take that plus the livestock information and that then gives us a full profile of the greenhouse gas emissions associated with the beef that Michael produces. So how do you get farmers to apply all this science to their own farm? What well, we're trying to do again through working with Chagas is develop what we're calling a carbon navigator, which essentially focuses in on the practical things that a farmer can do to improve their performance further. So for example, if they could set a target for increasing the amount of days in the year the animals are outdoors grazing, they can see through the navigator tool what impact that would have from an emissions point of view, but also from an economic point of view in terms of cost of production. So really, all the time trying to help farmers get the message and understand what economic and environmental impact this sort of assessment can have if they make the changes that are, that are required. If we can deliver on our promise of sustainability, we'll position Irish agriculture where it was generations ago to make it once again the cornerstone of our economy. The road is long and as we've seen, the challenges are many, but with adversity, there are often opportunities. The time has finally come to rethink how we grow, share and consume our food. And it's happening at a time where we also need to build resilience back into our communities. Argent Green just might give us the chance to do both.